In this video, I'll capture some in-situ eels data and show the updated processing and synchronization capabilities GATAN has developed for the Continuum IS. The first thing I'm doing here is turning on a DEN Solutions wildfire heating holder, uh, which is controlled through GMS, and I'll heat the sample to 50 degrees. I've also started the STEM scan, and now I'll pause that scan and start the live eels view. When the beam is scanning, my eels data comes from wherever the beam was at the moment. But now that my scan is stopped, I get data from a single location where the beam is parked. Now I'm showing the temperature recipe that I already had saved, and I'll run that recipe and hit record in the eels acquisition palette. Now it is recording in situ eels data continuously to disk, and it's also capturing the set and measured temperatures from the heating holder, and I can also display that holder data in a live chart. And in that live chart, I can see that the temperature is ramping up to 250 degrees C, which is above the melting point of tin, and then back down to 50 degrees. And this recipe is set up to repeat this cycle several times. So now I'll stop the in-situ eels recording and the software automatically captures a high quality dark reference. I can now open the heating holder data, which was saved with my eels data set. And if I click within this temperature plot, this updates my eels data. And if I play back the data with the IS player, that also updates the eels data. I can also sum together several frames of my eels data, and I can even sum a different number of frames for the low loss and high loss regions of the spectrum if I want to. And again, all of this is synchronized as it plays back. Now I'll fit my eels data using Gatan's tool for nonlinear least squares fitting. And I'll fit this plasmon peak with a Gaussian function. If I go back to my in situ player and play back the data, then this fit is updated live. So as the temperature ramps up and down, I'll see the shift in the plasmon peak position. And this shift is caused by the expansion of the material during melting. Since you have lower electron density, uh, the plasmon energy decreases. Now I'm going to align my data using the zero loss peak. It's very important if I want to accurately measure this plasmon peak position for my zero loss peak to be at exactly zero throughout the data set. And I can do this quite easily in the software. This will not only align the low loss part of the data where I'm measuring the zero loss peak, but also the high loss portion. Here in the align data, I still have my fit and I can play that back. So now you see both the align data and the original data are playing back synchronized using the IS player. I'll constrain the full width half max uh, of this peak since I don't expect that to change. Since I'm happy with this fit, 
I can now apply this very easily to the entire aligned data set by pressing map. I'll also output the reduced chi-squared, uh, and all of these other default options are fine. So now it's going through and processing every one of the 83,000 plus spectra in this data set, uh, which takes just a few seconds. And the parameter I'm really interested in is this peak position here. So I'll move that back to my primary workspace. And now we'll see that as I play the data, that measured peak position plot is also synchronized. I can also change this display so that each pixel displays an average of the data it represents rather than the max and min as it usually does in GMS. And this is a new feature in GMS 3.5.0. I now have my original data, my aligned data, my measurement uh, of the peak fit position, and also the temperature data all synchronized because it's all on the same workspace. And that data is playing back with the IS player, which now synchronizes all data displayed on the same workspace.